Clutch Trucker is filmed before a live studio audience. Right, Rusty? You can just see the excitement, can't you? Okay, fun part of trucking today. Had a coolant hose uh, blow on me, leaking. Uh, right as I got to my shipping destination, or receiving destination here in Denver, uh, Coca-Cola. They wouldn't let me in because it's leaking. So I had to uh, call around, found the part, and uh, had to take an Uber over there to get it. Another Uber to get back. And uh, now I'm going to attempt to change out this uh, coolant hose on my own. Okay, don't know how well you're going to be able to see this, but here is the back up. You can see a little bit. That line right here coming off of the radiator. Here's a short little hose junction. Got this elbow line going off to a one inch line over here. And then right below it, see this big three inch line that I'm tapping now? That's the one that's leaking. It's leaking right there where it crosses the frame and leaking of course all down causing a giant mess you can see the hose going down it elbows up over there into the water pump right there anyway well what happened overall is yeah I tried to do that repair on my own I did get uh, one side of the hose off which I can show you in this picture Yeah, that one came off with no trouble. Of course, the one that wouldn't come off easily is the uh, one that was hardest to get to. Stuck uh, between the frame and the engine underneath there. And I uh, was able to get the clamp off, but then the hose would not come off. It was like seared on there, uh, almost like welded on in a way. And I just could not get it off as uh, I tried it. So that's when it was time to punt and uh, make a call and do a road call as uh, much as I hate to do that. Uh, you know, it's a hose clamp. It's a hose with two clamps on the ends. It should have been fairly easy, even though that one was kind of in a difficult situation. But because of where it was, I couldn't get like a straight screwdriver down in there far enough to, uh, you know, get that edge away around all the way around and get it off. I had to call TA for a road squad thing, and of course they took three hours to get there. Uh, I, good news is I already had the part. Uh, I did save money by going to buy the part on my own. If uh, TA had charged me for that part, that part would have been $100 more. I did have to have them bring extra coolant because at that point I literally lost all the coolant in the engine or in the uh, radiator and everything and I only had uh, four gallons that I bought. So he brought another six and that was enough to get me going. But he had to get under there and cut uh, the hose off completely and then get pliers and other uh, uh, screwdrivers and everything to, to wrench that off. It was like almost welded on that thing. So uh, it took him a little bit to get it off. Good news is because I at least got the other end off. I already had the new hose clamps. I already had the part. It still took him less than an hour to do it. So even on a road call, it wasn't terrible. And I was only four hour, or four miles away from the TA. It's just, it took extra time. And I had to pay more than I wanted to. But like I say, I was still able to cut a couple corners uh, to save some time, which meant overall saving me some bucks. Now, of course, while I was waiting, I had the uh, you know hood open and everything. I had noticed on my way down to Denver, back from Montana, that I had just replaced those two air to air boots, like, you know, a couple of weeks ago, to get my boost pressure back up to where it should have been. And I noticed back on the way down, it was uh, running low again. I'm like, well, well, what's going on? Then I remembered, ah, about a year and a half ago. Hey. Remember Clutch Trucker when you were in Pennsylvania and all of a sudden you lost boost and you were on the turnpike? Uh, I remember there's a little uh, tiny air hose that goes between the compressor and uh, up under uh, to a little fitting uh, underneath the intake manifold. Um, so while I had the hood open and I was just waiting for TA to show up, I went back out there and felt it around and sure enough, it was that same hose I had remembered uh, breaking before and in pretty much the exact same spot right at, up where it goes into the compressor. So then once I finally got fixed from TA and everything, I was able to uh, run. I had another load I was picking up that night. I had to drop my trailer in XPO in Henderson, Colorado. At that point, the uh, Freightliner in Brighton wasn't too far away. I rolled up there and I got another piece of hose. And this is just a cheap little hose. It was a low pressure hose but it was really making a difference on the boost pressure, uh, therefore causing me a higher or a lower fuel economy and um, not as much power. But I at least remembered how to replace it, just has two clamps on either end. Problem is the one end that goes up into the manifold, easy to get to, pliers, undo the clamp, bang, pull it right off. 
the other end where it goes in against uh, the uh, compressor, of course, it's against the engine. It's on the other side, which you can't really see, and you're trying to wedge your pliers in there and get that hose on. So it took me about 45 minutes or so to wrangle that new piece of hose on. Luckily, when I was at the Freightliner, I, uh, I bought three feet of hose so that I can now have extra hose to replace that issue again. So I saved about 200 bucks by not paying a shop to do that for me. So at least I had two repairs I had to deal with in one day. One, I saved some money by buying the parts and bringing all the coolant. And two, on the second one, I was able to do myself just a little bit of wrestling to get it in there. And now I have extra hose. So I will do that for the next repair and save some more money buying another part that I need. If I can pull it out here. Dun, 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 dun. This is, if you can see it, an engine brake solenoid. When I was at Sap Brothers a few weeks back and had them do a whole bunch of stuff, they ran the overhead, they did an oil change, they put a new air cartridge in, uh, fixed a flex pipe, uh, blah, blah, blah. Uh, they couldn't do the boots then because there was no place to buy it locally. I did those and I have a video all about that. Um, and they did replace one of my uh, engine brake solenoids. There are two on this engine. It wasn't going into high a lot of the time, most of the high, and most of the time. So uh, they replaced one of them, which they saw as weak, uh, but still that didn't completely fix my problem. This is what that looks like. This is an engine brake solenoid, okay? This screws down in, it's charged by oil, and then also triggered by uh, the wires there, you can see. First off, if you put your engine brake switch on, then that tells the solenoid to get ready and then it's uh, oil going up through the bottom there actually makes it function and makes it work. Okay, this uh, I had tried to order from the Freightliner in Cheyenne. Of course, they didn't have it. They had to order it and it was going to be about 155 bucks. So while I was there at the Freightliner in Brighton, Colorado, I said, hey, do you have that while I'm here? And they said, yeah, we do. It's 160 some odd dollars. And I said, hey, Cheyenne has it for 155. So they gave it to me for the same price. So now I killed another bird by picking this up as well. So next time I'm back through a Sap Brothers because they're the only ones I really or trust to touch most of my truck, I'll bring them this part and say, hey, go ahead and put that in and that should solve my engine brake issue. All right, so there you go. And speaking of that little airline hose that I had to put on there that goes from the compressor to the uh, manifold intake, I do have a picture of that. It's the dark one covered in grease behind the front one. So there you go, another video about repairs. Uh, of course, you know, yeah, I admit fault. I wasn't able to do this one completely on my, my own as far as that, um, uh, you know, coolant hose goes. A little frustrating, Had you know, but I, I hit a point where I just couldn't do it with the tools I had on hand at the time. So that's where you punt, you gotta pay somebody sometimes, at least was able to do the other repair on my own and save some bucks there. And yes, now I have backup hose so that I can repair that one on my own again with just some pliers. So there's the good news. All right, that's all part of being an owner operator as I talk about in a lot of these videos. Uh, the more things you can do on your own, uh, the better off. Uh, another uh, lesson from this one, and <clears throat> again, is I trust Sap Brothers a lot. I buy parts from Freightliners, but I almost never have Freightliners do the work on the truck. Freightliners sell the parts cheaper, but they're really high on getting things done and try to get into one. Just forget about it. It's days. I don't have days to wait. At least on this one, I was still able to deliver that load to Coca-Cola that night. Was still able to make my next load and drop it off uh, my trailer at XPO and may able to make the delivery the next morning because I was able to show eight hours off or a 10 hours off actually at Coca-Cola so I could drop the trailer and then still get on the road and deliver the next morning in Billings, Montana. So uh, of course I hardly got any sleep but that's trucking baby that's what you gotta do uh, gotta love it as always thanks for watching please subscribe please ring the bell uh like comment if you would like as well sniff that magic youtube fairy dust as always clutch out